Hello and welcome to a very rudimentary explanation as to how parkrun timing works. One of the most often asked questions by first timers is how the whole timing system works, so this video will hopefully give you an insight as to its mechanics. If you are new to parkrun or simply if you've ever wondered how the amazing parkrun volunteers managed to know what time you finished in, then here's a visual demonstration as to how. It's principally very straightforward, but it does involve having all participants keep to a few set rules to allow the results processing to be made as accurate as possible with as little complication as possible. In this instance you see before you we have 10 perfect parkrunners having very much enjoyed their Saturday 5k and are about to cross the finish line. Even if you have 10, 100 or 1000 parkrunners, the same timing system and principle is used at all events, including 2k junior parkruns that happen on Sundays. Let's start off by having Nicola here cross the finish line first. As she crosses the finish line, the timers will take her time. The timers will have started the timing when they run direct to start the event and now will have their first time recorded. Beep, beep. As an FYI, almost all events will have two timers, just in case one timer has something go wrong. It's good to have backup. And please keep in mind, it's best not to distract the timers during the event. They need to concentrate. Nicola will make her way through the finish final and at the end will be given a position token by another volunteer, which will have number one on. There she goes. Do, 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 do. I finished first. Hooray, 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 hooray. And a number one token is then given to her. That's assigned to her. Nicola will take that over to one of the volunteer barcode scanners and they will use their virtual volunteer app to scan her personal barcode, then the position token. This means that the system, when it comes to results processing, will know who was first finisher and will assign the first time taken to Nicola. The same applies to the second person to cross the line and so forth until the final finisher, the tail walker, comes in. And in this case, it's Dolly here at the back who literally has a tail. All being well, the 10 perfect parkrun participants will cross the line, take a token and get scanned and then off home they go. So Stuart goes through, hello Stuart, through the funnel, number two token assigned to him as he comes through. There you go. And then say Drew comes through in position number three, actually nearly went out the funnel there. And then position number three and so forth. And the timers will be taking a time every time somebody crosses the line. So that's how it works. Okay, as you can see, fourth participant gets the fourth token and so forth. Okay, all being well, the 10 perfect parkrun participants will cross the line, take a token, get scanned, and then off home they go. The 10 times taken get matched to the 10 position tokens given out, and there we go. A set of accurate results is produced. That's the ideal. Now we come to the part where things can go awry, and this is where everyone plays their part. So let's get everybody back in position again. So they're all coming into the finish. Back you go, Stu. Back you go, Nick. First up, funnel duckers. Once in the funnel, please do not duck out. Let's have Hannah do this. So Hannah crosses the line, time is taken. The reason for it is simple. Between the times taken just here and the position tokens given out, removing yourself will desync the whole alignment. So if Hannah comes out of the funnel, the time given to her will not align with the tokens given out at the end. No longer a perfect park runner is Hannah. She ducks out having been timed across the line as position number, say two. And then the person after her, let's say in this instance it's Mark, he will then be given the token that's meant to go to Hannah. This causes a few headaches during uh, results processing for a lot of teams. It's probably the most common cause of results processing headaches. The best thing here is to simply not cross the line if you don't want to have a time. But if you do cross the line, go through the funnel process, take a token and simply give it back to one of the scanners. The system will know to keep that token as unassigned. So please don't funnel duck. Another problem that can arise is token refusal. At some events, this can cause issues at peak times. So me here, Danny, comes through the finished funnel. There we go. I've had my time taken and I say, no, I don't want a token. Sometimes in the busy periods, the token giver can not know what to do and, and should pocket the token, but sometimes it might be given and or held onto and given to the next person. It just causes complications. So don't refuse a token if you've gone through the funnel, just take one and give it back to one of the scanners. Always stay in order in the funnel. If you skip ahead of others who cross the line ahead of you, you will be assigned an incorrect time and so will the people you skipped. So Gabby's gone through and then Bev comes through but then she runs ahead of Gabby. Gabby crossed the line in front of her, but Bev is now gonna get her position token that will sync with her time. Again, causing confusion and complications in the results processing. Only cross the line if you've done the full distance. If you cross the line and then tell a volunteer that you haven't done the whole thing, it is too late. Your time has been taken the moment you cross the finish. The best thing to do here is peel off beforehand and don't cross the finish line twice. So say Elliot crosses the line, goes through, takes a token, and then runs back to go and meet, say a friend or family member, and then he runs in with them and crosses the line again, he's going to be timed again. The timers will not know if you've gone through already. They will click everyone who crosses the line. So if you do go back to run in with a friend, once again, peel off before the finish line. Otherwise you'll be assigned another time and once again, the system will need sorting. 
The aim is to keep positions and times aligned. If this is successful, then the volunteers have a happy time and we want all the volunteers to be happy and everything is kept simple. A few things worth noting, please respect any volunteer funnel manager's instructions, especially at larger attendance events. Help the volunteers to help you receive a fair and reflective time as this will make their lives easier during the results processing. Please remember to give your position tokens back after being scanned and above all else, please thank all the volunteers whenever you can. Oh, and one more thing, if you have forgotten your own personal barcode, then don't worry, take part in the park run. But if you cross the finish line, go through the funnel, take your position token and just simply give it back. The system once again will know what to do with it. It will leave it unassigned. If you've liked this video, please give us a like. If you have any comments, do let us know in the comments below. Or even better, please share this video so that the wider Parkrun world can understand the magic that goes on at all Parkrun events across the globe week in, week out. Thanks for watching.